I think it's important as a business owner to have a blog because that's often how people find me. I've gotten some of the best consulting gigs just because someone Googled, uh, you know, registered dietitian in Atlanta. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Creator Spotlight. I'm Adriana, and today we are with Marisa Moore from marisamoore.com. Welcome to the show, Marisa. Tell us a little bit about you, how you got started. Introduce yourself. Hi, Audrey. I am Marissa Moore from marissamore.com. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I do all things culinary nutrition and communications, and I'm actually also a soon-to-be cookbook author. So I know that you were a solely offline registered dietitian with zero content creator experience to become a content creator. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. So it's a funny story. I would say, <laughs> well, I don't know if it's that funny, but <laughs> I, um, my first website was a long, long time ago. It was back in 2008, I think, and it was marissamore.com. And at that time, I was doing a lot of media work. So I was making regular appearances on CNN and all of these different media outlets. And I wanted a way for people to be able to easily find me. So I put up marissamore.com and started sharing nu nutrition tips. And so it was just a natural transition from you know things that I was sharing with people one-to-one -one or in groups or in classes offline to sharing that information online. And then eventually somewhere along the way, you know, people started taking pictures of food with their phones and it started to become a thing. And I got wow. wrapped up in that. <laughs> and so you started, loved it. <laughs> I did. I don't know. I don't even know how it happened. But I think it was just, you know, a natural progression for my love for food, right? And for writing. Um, and so those two things kind of came together. And then it spawned from me putting up nutrition tips. And then it went to recipes, progressively getting a little bit better with my photography. And then also uh, from there, because I was doing these appearances on CNN, I was also used to doing video, right? So eventually I started to translate those things that I, you know, I was able to do uh, with the media to doing my own, where I started to kind of create videos on my own. And it's still a work in progress, but that's how that transition happened. I was writing and then I ended up uh, translating it and putting it onto my own blog. What about your community? How does it, your community see you? How, how is your community involved? So there's a couple of different things, right? So there are several different communities when we think about blogging. There's definitely the community that I value uh, greatly because I've learned so much from bloggers, other bloggers. We support each other like nothing else uh, because I think we're kind of in this whole like alternate universe where our families don't really understand everything that we do. <laughs> and, 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 you know, if something goes viral, like we're the only ones who really care, um, you know, but <laughs> learning all about SEO, it all comes often from other people. Yeah, so it's really important. But at the same time, I'm also part a part of the registered dietitian community. So, um, you know, helping each other out in that kind of way. But then I also have my audience, right, who they look to me for simple nutrition tips and credible nutrition tips, easy recipes. So several different communities that I kind of move about in, and it's all online and all fantastic. How do you guys stay in touch with each other? Like, what do you use? And tell me about it. Yeah, so there are so many different ways that we stay connected. Um, of course, social media, you know, the typical Instagram, Facebook, um, and different groups. There are several groups that are catered that catered specifically to bloggers, and it's a great way to meet people. But also, just people going into your DMs and asking questions. Um, for yeah, for me also you know, the comments on my blog, that is such important information for me from my community. I know the kinds of questions they have. I know what kinds of things they're looking for. I also use a newsletter to stay in touch with my community. Uh, and so sometimes that's just them replying to that email newsletter. Um, but I also do, well, I used to do a lot of in-person events, <laughs> but not so much anymore, of course. So now we're doing lots of virtual things where we're, yeah, we're doing things, cooking demos live and a variety of other 
uh, events to kind of stay in touch with people. How do you monetize your blog or website? Tell us a little bit about monetization. I started my blog back in 2008. And honestly, I didn't add any ads or advertisements to my blog until 2019. Um, It just wasn't one of the things that I was thinking about doing. But in 2019, I did add, um, become part of an ad network. And that's worked out really well. Uh, So that's one way that I monetize, but I also have um, partnerships and ambassadorships where I have some sponsored content, but those are probably the two main things. But what I will say, um, my blog is just a part of my business and I do a lot of writing. So I write for other platforms. I do a lot of consulting where I work with restaurants and food companies. And so my consulting business is totally separate from my blog. Uh, Yes, I have several different things that I do. And my work as a registered dietitian, I speak uh, to different groups as well. So I think it's important as a business owner to have a blog because that's often how people find me. I've gotten some of the best consulting gigs just because someone Googled, uh, you know, registered dietitian in Atlanta and they find me and they hire me for a job. So it's really important. Yeah. So it's really important to have a blog so that monetization. Yeah. It could be an advertising network, but it could also just simply be having a good blog with that's optimized that people can find you to hire you to do other things. Exactly. It's like, it's like, it's like the face you have in the, in the, in the web. It is. It's the, it's the one place that you own. And I think that's what's so important because all of our social media could disappear tomorrow, uh, which would be tragic, but it's happened to so many people. Um, but it's really important that we own a piece of the web and marissamore.com is my little piece. <laughs> Why don't you give a quick tip to all the people watching you, to all of our audience about monetization? Yeah, so I think it's really important to diversify your income if you are a self-employed individual. And I've been self-employed now for almost nine years. And um, having different ways to earn money has just really been fantastic. And in, in that I don't, I can sleep a little bit better at night if you know one thing doesn't <laughs> one thing doesn't work out. Um, so because as an entrepreneur things can change, right? You have a contract this year that you don't have next year. So it's really important to diversify. So for me, it's speaking, it's writing, it's the blog, um, it's consulting. You know, I have all these different ways to bring in income. Tell me how do you create your content? I wish I had like an intricate plan for the way that I create content. Um, But it's really not, to be honest. I really like to focus on what's in season. Um, I have this theme of um, going with things that are simple. And I'm always, always looking for simple and easy ways to fit in more fruits and vegetables and plant-based foods. I really keep those things at the top of my um at the top of my mind, I, I look at, you know, what, what people need, what people are looking for. And then I like to kind of sketch out a little bit of a plan for how that content is going to present itself. So of course, there's a blog post with now I take step-by-step photos of how to create a recipe. And then I write up the blog post with lots of details on, you know, tips and substitutions and things that people would, would possibly ask me about. Uh, And then I take all the photos and I'm keeping in mind all along the way that I'm going to need photos for Pinterest. I'm going to need photos for Instagram. I'm going to need photos for web stories, which I know we're going to talk about. Uh, (laughs) And so I think about all of those and how those are going to play out over social media and in the different ways that I might use them. And then I take action on them. And once the content is created, I share it out and share it and share it and share it. (laughs) That, that's great. And, and tell me about your, your photography skills, how you learn them and tell me all that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the ph- photography thing is uh, a, a funny thing that I never would have imagined would be under my name at all. And I don't consider myself a professional photographer, but I consider myself like a budding food photographer. Um, but somewhere along the way, I fell in love with taking pictures of food. I love just a little bit of shadows and 
keeping things very simple and minimal minimalist. Um, and I actually took a class. So I wanted to improve my blogging skills. I wanted to improve my photography. So I took a class with the big blogger that everybody knows, Pinch of Yum. A friend of mine and I, we traveled to Minneapolis, I think now four, three or four years ago, and attended one of her workshops in person. And that really actually helped me to understand just the basics of food photography. I got like a real camera, started taking photos and kind of gone up from there. Um, It's a daily practice. And I've even turned food photography into an additional revenue stream not on purpose, but people like the photos and sometimes they want to buy them. So, uh, you know, there's an opportunity there as well. I know you recently has been exploring web stories, trying web stories. Tell me about it. Tell me, tell me about your experience with web stories. Yeah. So uh, it's been a great experience just kind of figuring out how to do them, to be perfectly honest. The one thing that I realize is that um, what's really important is having some consistency so that I think people can get used to your style for web stories, but also giving people, you know, more information than what you might get on the blog to kind of pull them in and help them to uh, kind of get a little bit of a, a sense for who you are. Uh, and I've been kind of playing around with them a bit. I will say that I'm still very new. They are a good bit different than I think, say, an Instagram story. And, you know, with Instagram stories, a lot of times I'll just kind of be sitting on the couch and I'll just you know, post, post something really quickly. <laughs> But with web stories, I think, you know, the key is to really think through how you're going to formulate that story. And it's almost like a combination of how I might write a piece for an article um, and sort of an online uh, story as well. So I'm still kind of figuring that out. Um, but it's been, it's been a fun sort of journey just to try to figure out, you know, what's next with web stories and see how they work for me. And so, Marisa, now we're talking about web stories. Do you have any success with web stories? I think it's still really early for me. Um, I did post one earlier this week, and I did, like, the next day see that um, it got lots of views. So I guess that's some success, but I am still in the process of learning. And uh, I think I will have success with them just based on the few that I've made. But I think it's still a little early and the jury's still out. Has your approach to content creation changed from when you just started? Uh, I would say yes. I didn't have any sort of a plan uh, when I first started. I had no, no idea what I was doing, really. I was just kind of posting things and walking away. Uh, and now I definitely take a more formulaic approach. I do research before I decide to uh, post anything on the blog uh, to make sure that it is something that people want, want to um Who, people that something that people are searching for and that's going to be useful uh, before spending a lot of time. And then I spend time trying to figure out, okay, well, what's the best way to do that? If I'm creating a video, it means I'm creating a storyboard to make sure that I get all the different steps for the recipe or whatever the content might be. It also means that I'm researching the kinds of questions that people might have about a particular recipe or an ingredient, for example, how to substitute that. And then I schedule the photo shoot and make sure that I have enough photos to support all of that information. So I would say it definitely changed. And like I mentioned, I uh, so when I took the, the class with Pinch of Yum, I learned a whole lot just about simplifying the photography process even. So definitely there's been a major change in the way that I handle photos and the way that I Uh, design a photo shoot. Marisa, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to make this interview with me. Uh, we're coming to an end right now, so anything you would like to share to the audience? Yeah, first, thank you so much for having me on today, Audrey. It's been fantastic. And the one thing that I would leave the audience with is just Think about your expertise. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, had zero experience with anything online. So if you do have expertise offline, I encourage you to bring it online. Someone's definitely going to benefit from it. Thank you so much, Marisa. Thank you everyone watching another Creator Spotlight. See you next time. Bye.